Welcome friends to my fall garden check-in. Some things did really well this year. Some things are on their way out, others are on their way in. We've got some cleaning up to do. The pots did fairly well considering. Stay tuned. We had a tropical storm come through about a week ago and the winds were so heavy that they blew some of the plants sideways and they've stayed there. Some things have become scraggly. See, look at that Russian sage. It's just permanently sideways for the rest of the year. Uh, the bearded tongue is on its way out. The coreopsis, amazingly, is still blooming the wind had its way with that as well. The black and bloom salvia are looking great. They're a late summer bloomer and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Now this coneflower is diseased. It has aster yellows disease, which is caused by the aster leaf hopper. It can often happen to coneflowers, to black-eyed Susans, and a few other varieties. You can see that the flowers have appendages coming out of them like little satellites. The remedy is to dig up the whole plant. The sedum is looking as it should at this time of year. It's past its prime. Now let's get into the yarrow. I had cut it back a couple months ago, and at this point it's time to cut most of it down to the ground. This is the final result of that hard prune, and what grew up looks pretty healthy. Sadly, the only remedy for dealing with Aster Yellow's disease is to dig up the entire plant. This was such a beautiful coneflower. It had three wonderful years. I've never had this happen to any other coneflowers or black-eyed Susans before. I went online and did a lot of research on it and there's nothing that can be done to save the plant. So out it comes. And here's a close-up of some of the strange flowers that grew appendages from this disease. On to happier topics. I'm going to drop in this new salvia. I had some empty spots I discovered mid-season this year and pledged to fill them in.
I'm adding in a traditional garden phlox and putting it next to the white phlox David so that there will be a little mixture of color. This is the new rose I planted that was gifted by my friend. It's a David Austin variety called Scepter de Isle. It's looking pretty darn healthy. I'm really happy with it this year, but I'm going to deadhead a couple things. Often I get a second flush in October. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Moving right along over to the David Austin Vanessa Bell Rose. I put this in last year, 2022, and it did very well. However, this year, midsummer, I started noticing some signs of possible RRD. You can see witch's broom growth patterns. You can see buds that should be yellow, that are pinkish, and they're malformed. My front rose bush, which was an Olivia Austin, I had to remove from RRD. I had to remove it this spring. I fear that the mites that cause RRD may have gotten to this rose in the back of my property. So I'm going to cut this way down and we'll see what it does in the spring. At the first sign of disease, I'm going to have to take the whole thing out. We've gotten a lot done today. We've really fixed up the larger garden, got rid of the diseased coneflower. And let's take a look at how it's looking in this time, October 1st. Thank you for being here, friends. I really appreciate you staying with me. Have a great week.